is up everybody? Welcome back to the Cinebros YouTube channel. So this isn't five minute movie reviews. This is a new series that I'll be doing over the next couple weeks talking about The Mandalorian Season 2. It's going to be kind of like a breakdown slash mini review for each episode. I'm going to go two episodes at a time. So today I'm going to be talking about episodes 1 and 2 of Season 2 or technically chapter 9 and 10 but I'm just going to call them episodes one and two. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So to give you my broad thoughts overall before I get into the plot points of each episode, overall, this is really fun. I mean, The Mandalorian, it's the biggest show on television when it's airing. I mean, that's not debatable. And it's the best Star Wars media out right now that's out currently, like, period. Because Rise of Skywalker eh, and The Last Jedi, that's a big eh, because no one really liked that movie too much. I guess some people did, but... In fact, that's a good plug for our podcast episode we did about that. Go check that out. But anyway, so Mandalorian Season 2 picks off pretty close to where the last season left off, and the tone is still there. I love that this is essentially a Star Wars version of a Western, and all of those elements are still there. It's a really well done, exciting show. I mean, there's not a whole lot that hasn't been said as far as the quality of the show overall. It's just a beautiful show. Cinematography is great. Special effects are awesome. This show obviously has a massive budget because Disney and Star Wars, but, I mean, it's all on the screen. It looks really good. Pedro Pascal still really good as the voice of the Mandalorian. I will say that, overall, the first two episodes of Season 2, while they're fun, kind of like standalone adventures, it, it's kind of hard for them to tie into a main plot line. And they feel more like, kind of like a Monster of the Week episode, where Mando and the crew get kind of in a situation and... They get out of it, and then happy ending at the end. And that's kind of the way it's been going the first two episodes. And if you're into that kind of slower pace that doesn't really tie into the narrative, then that's cool. You'll really like it. And, I mean, this is a very enjoyable show. I'm still a fan. But, you know, it's not as good as season one, I don't think. But, you know what? Long season ahead of us. We're just two episodes in, so don't want to judge it too harshly. So, to start off with the first episode of season two... This is my favorite of the two so far. So basically, this episode is about Mando is trying to find other Mandalorians to help him transport Baby Yoda to basically his kind, right? He's going to bring him back. So he's got to find more Mandalorians to kind of help him out. So he is told to go to Tatooine, and <laughs> you get really excited because when you hear a Mandalorian on Tatooine, who has Mandalorian armor on Tatooine? Boba Fett, and the prospect of seeing Boba Fett is obviously very exciting. So he goes to Tatooine, and a lot of classic Star Wars imagery here, right? So he gets to Tatooine, and he goes into the small mining town, which is called Mos Espo. And it's kind of cool because they mention Mos Eisley, and it, he goes to a cantina, kind of like Mos Eisley from Episode 4. So it gives you a lot of like reminiscent vibes of, that, of Episode 4 and classic Star Wars. And that's really fun to see. This show does fan service better than anything I've seen, to be honest with you. It doesn't hit you over the head. It's the perfect little bit of nostalgia. So, they go to Mos Espo, and a guy with Boba Fett's armor, who everybody calls him the marshal of the town, he's the law around there, right? Boba Fett, in his armor, kind of walks in, and at first you think, holy cow, is that Boba Fett? But then he takes off his mask, and it's like not Boba Fett. It's actually a guy played by Timothy Oliphant, who is really good in everything he's in. And it's kind of funny that he's like a marshal of this town in like a western-y type role. It kind of brings you back when he was in Deadwood and Justified, which I heard both those shows were good. I hadn't seen them. But really cool to see him in this show. But he's a marshal of this town. And Mandalorian instantly realizes that he has his armor, but he's not a Mandalorian. And that's not part of the Mandalorian code. You know what I mean? So he wants to take back the armor from this guy. So they're about to fight. But this giant thing called a crate Dragon attacks the town. And Mandalorian realizes that he can get something if he helps them out. So Mando agrees to help the town kill this dragon in exchange for the guy returning the armor to him. And that's a pretty cool setup. And I like the fact that Mando is basically acting as a bridge between these two communities to help them unite and take on this common threat. Got the Sand People, Tusken Raiders. It was cool to see them again. You hadn't seen them for a while. And they were used pretty well. And I love the dynamic between them and the townspeople, how they hate each other. Like, with they cannot stand each other. And I like how Mando essentially has to convince these two groups to work together for a common goal. So, this whole episode is a build-up to the last little bit when they fight the Krayt Dragon, and 
it's so exciting. The design for this creature is nuts. I mean, it looks really awesome and very, very terrifying. And as soon as you see it, you know it's going to be a threat. So the Cray Dragon comes out and long story short, they defeat it, save the day, gets the armor back, takes off, leaves Tatooine. But it doesn't end there because the last seconds of the episode, as they're flying away, Boba Fett shows up and they got Tamara Morrison who played Boba Fett in play Boba Fett and Django and the clone troopers back in the prequel movies and they got him back to reprise his role it's just a couple second shot of him walking and he's unmasked and he doesn't have any lines but you know instantly that that's Boba Fett and how awesome is that they kind of tease Boba Fett this entire episode and you get a shot of him at the end now I will use that to go on to episode two because Boba Fett is not in, in episode two and that's fine you know he doesn't instantly have to be a big part of the show I like how he's being teased slowly. It's pretty entertaining. But episode two is definitely not as good as the first one. It, it definitely seems a little bit more inconsequential to the overall narrative of him trying to return Baby Yoda, but still fun. So the premise of this episode, it turns into an escort mission type of episode. So they're still on Tatooine, still trying to find Mandalorians because the guy last episode he found wasn't a Mandalorian. So he's still looking for Mandalorians. And this lady who, it's this alien creature, we'll call her Frog Lady, because that's what she's credited as in the episode, is Frog Lady. And that's really funny. That's a pretty funny joke they put in there. But Frog Lady is trying to get to this planet, this nearby planet, that isn't named, by the way, but they go, she wants to go to this nearby planet, and she has this giant container of liquid, and her eggs are floating in it. And she wants her husband to fertilize her eggs so their kind can live on. So... Mando has to escort her from Tatooine to this planet, and I guess in exchange for that, she's going to give him in information about the Mandalorian. So he agrees to escort her. While they're flying to this planet, they get attacked by New Republic X-Wing fighters. And it's a cameo from Dave Filoni as one of the pilots who, I love Dave Filoni, I mean the Clone Wars and the Mandalorian. He's like a Star Wars master at this point. So it's always fun to see him cameoing in the show. But they get shot down, right? And they land on this ice planet. And it's it's not Hoth. So they don't go over the top with fan service, like I said. So it's not Hoth. It's an unnamed planet. They land there, and their ship is totally fried. I mean, it's messed up. So they got to wait there and do repairs. And I really like this scene where Mando is just wanting to give up at this point. Because his ship's totally messed up. No one knows where they are. And he's just sitting down and just kind of accepting his fate. And Frog Lady, <laughs> she uses the head, the severed head of a droid that they find. And she uses that to kind of translate her language to his because she doesn't speak English. She speaks like her own native tongue or whatever. Sounds like frog noises. It's kind of funny. But she basically uses that translator to tell him, basically to inspire him to get back up kind of pick him up by his bootstraps and get back to work. She says, I thought Mandalorian stuck to their work. And it's a really cool scene of her kind of <laughs> inspiring him to do this. I didn't expect this episode to have something like that. So it's a really cool dynamic between the two. And Frog Lady's quickly becoming a really cool character to me, even though this is the only episode we see her in. So Frog Lady gets him to start working again. And there, he finds her in this cave, right, in this ice cave. And there's this hot spring that she's bathing in and she's keeping her eggs in there to like keep them warm. I really hate saying fertilizing eggs and stuff. That really makes me feel icky. But anyway, she has her eggs in this pool, right? And the whole episode, Baby Yoda, I guess, finds these eggs delicious because Mando constantly has to stop Baby Yoda from eating these eggs, from eating this woman's children. And that's really messed up when you think about it. But it's Baby Yoda, so it's cute anyway. But he, um, this, yeah, this race of dying people, this is the last chance of them to repopulate and baby yoda's like nah i'm just gonna eat these eggs but so baby yoda realizes he can't eat these eggs so he walks into the cave and finds a larger egg and he breaks into it and starts to eat something out of that egg and as he's doing that you realize oh no those things look like spiders <laughs> and if you have arachnophobia anybody this is a pretty hard episode to watch because these giant ice spiders and that's what they're called in Star Wars canon. You can try to correct me if you want, but that's what they're called. There's no fancy name. So I know how Star Wars fans are. <laughs> um, so they break out of the eggs, and this movie, uh, this episode basically turns into 
an escape mission now. They're being chased through the cave by like hordes of these spiders. And there's big ones, little tiny ones. I mean, it's honestly pretty freaky, but it's very entertaining. And they eventually start to get overwhelmed and they're cornered in their ship and they're basically screwed. They're done for. And out of nowhere, the fighter pilots from before who shot them down show up and save them. They kill all the spiders. And Mando thinks they're going to arrest him. But they say that even though there's a warrant on your head from rescuing an dangerous prisoner from the New Republic. You also help defend the New Republic at the same time. So we're going to let you go. That's a callback to episode six of season one. Remember that episode? It was one of the weaker episodes of the season, but when they broke in and rescued that prisoner from, and there was double crossing and all that kind of stuff, it's a cool little callback to the first season. And, and I love how these <laughs> pilots, they save them from these spiders, right? They basically save their lives. But Mando's like, could you help me repair my ship? And they're like, no, nah, we saved your life, but we're going to dip. <laughs> it's like they saved their life from the spiders, but they don't care enough about them to help them repair the ship. So this episode actually ends kind of bleakly at first. You think it's going to end pretty bleakly because he's trying to get the ship back working and it's not. But then he finally gets the ship to work. They're all taken off. Happy ending. It, this was a fun, like, side plot type of episode. You know, it... I feel like if this episode wasn't in the season, nothing would have really been lost. There's nothing in the overall story that was continued here. But it was a fun little diversion for 35 minutes, which I really wish these episodes were longer than 35 minutes because with just like eight or nine episodes a season, I want like hour-long episodes. But we take what we get, right? So episodes one and two of The Mandalorian season two are a lot of fun. I really like them both. Uh, episode one is much better. I'm going to give episode 1 a 9 out of 10, and I'm going to give episode 2 a 6.5 out of 10. But still really enjoyed them both. A lot of fun. I'm looking forward to episode 3. Be on the lookout for more Mando reviews coming out very soon, and of course, 5-minute movie reviews. Next movie in that series is Let Him Go, which is recently coming out in theaters. I love that new movies are coming out in theaters, finally. Yes, risk your life to go watch them if you want at the theater, or wait. That's fine either way. So thank you all, of course, very much for watching. I will see you all next time. 